The Sapphire Effect Builder is easily the most powerful tool in the Generate Sapphire tool set. It enables you to combine multiple effects into one and create your own special effects or tools that you use in your day-to-day -day work. Additionally, the Builder allows you to input two different clips from different tracks in your timeline that you can use as either a background or a mask for the effect that you're creating. By the time you're done watching this video, you should have a working knowledge of the Builder and what it's capable of so that you can easily implement it in your daily work. Before the Builder, if you wanted to combine multiple effects on a clip, you would have to stack them. So you would drag an effect from your effect palette onto the clip, and then you would find the next effect that you want to apply, let's say in this case a glow, and then you would alt drag or option drag that effect on top of your clip. So then over here in your effect editor, you can see you've got multiple effects stacked on top of one another that you can now manipulate. And what happens is you have every parameter for every single effect appearing over here in the effect editor. This can become a nuisance and it also becomes somewhat cumbersome. On top of that, you will see a performance decrease whenever you apply your effects like this. Now with the builder, this can be done more efficiently and in a much more intuitive fashion. Let's go ahead and get started by grabbing the S effect from the builder category in your effect palette and dropping it onto a clip. Then in your effect editor, while you're in effect mode, click on edit effect. This is going to up open up the effect builder window. If you've done any compositing, this should look somewhat familiar, but if not, not to worry. Over here on the left hand side, under the components column, you will see almost all of the Sapphire filters that are available to you for Avid. And down here at the very bottom, you have a few tools that we aren't going to get into right now, but I will be showing you later on. So now what we can do is we can grab components from this column here and just simply drop them over here into this node interface and start stacking effects. So let's go down into the stylized category. You notice these categories correspond with the same categories that you see in your effect palette in Avid. Um, and just choose one that we want to start working with. I'm just going to take film damage here and drop it onto source. And you see it will automatically connect here. And I can play and start looking at what film damage looks like. All right. Now over here in the selection parameters, you'll notice that we have a lot of parameters for film damage. You'll also notice that there's a checkbox next to every single parameter that you can change. Every parameter with a checkbox next to it is going to show up in your effect editor. So when I click OK, you'll notice that I have all these different parameters for film damage, and there are quite a few of them. So I might want to turn some of those off after I've created the effect that I like. So going back into the builder, I'm just going to select my film damage node, uncheck all of them, and let's just say we want to be able to change how much dust and how many stains appear on this particular effect. Click OK, and then now you see only those two parameters are going to show up for me to change while I'm in the effect editor. This is helpful if you have a look that you like to use over and over again, and you want to be able to easily recreate it um, without having to hunt for the parameters that you want to change to alter the look. So back in the builder, let's go ahead and start by loading up a preset for film damage that we like, and there are a lot of them. So I'm gonna choose, uh, let's say Breaking Bad Desert, and I'll click load, and I like the way this looks, um, and I just wanna, change some of these parameters here to you know customize it a bit. The nice thing about the builder compared with the effect editor is that it's actually a lot easier to change the parameters. It's a lot more intuitive. The slider buttons are nice. You can easily enter um, numeric values a little bit easier than the effect editor. So I'm just going to um, I'm just going to change the way this looks a little bit. I'm going to uncheck all the parameters um, and maybe just add a couple hairs in there and um, maybe a scratch. Great, I like the way that looks. Alrighty, and for later on, if I want to change certain parameters, I'll just check the ones that I want to keep. Let's say I want to keep hairs and scratches. All right, very good. Now let's add something else on here. You notice that um, when our player jumped up here and made the basket, this light here turned on. So maybe we'd like to enhance that light a little bit with a lens flare. So I'll just type in lens up here and just drop that on top of film damage and now the lens flare is going to go on top of the film damage but wait a minute if i'm applying the film damage to this clip it would make sense for the film damage to actually be affected the flare so we might want to change the order of these so i'm just going to take this this uh node and just drop it on top of source and now i've just quickly rearranged the order of them and you can also right click on a particular node and disable it 
I can also use Command D on my keyboard to turn the effects on and off. If you want to preview just the node that you have selected, click on Preview Selected Node. And now I can either look at the node that's highlighted, or I can uncheck this and look at the final result, because you see that it's plugged into the result node here at the bottom. And now I'm going to adjust this lens flare. I'm going to stick it here on top of this light. So let's go over here to Hotspot and move my XY parameter and move that guy up like that. Great. I'm definitely going to want to uncheck a lot of these, but the Hotspot is one that I'm going to want to key keyframe later. So I'm going to keep that turned on. Okay. Now what we should do is load up a preset because there are over 1500 presets included in the Sapphire tool set and I want to find the one that looks right. Now I know they have got a couple in here that look like very realistic looking spotlights. Um, this one looks pretty great. So let's load that guy up. That looks pretty good. And maybe we'll add a little bit of a flicker. All right, and I want to include that parameter as well. Finally, I want to highlight these sets of buttons right along here. These are the preset animation curve buttons where you can actually animate certain parameters directly in the builder, which saves you time from having to keyframe them when you get back to the effect editor. So what's great about this is in this particular example, we could have the brightness of this lens flare ramp up to the end as the uh, basketball player is making his basket. So for example, let's say we want the brightness to be about right here uh, at the end of the clip. We can set this so that it ramps from a brightness value of zero up to 3.26. And then over the course of the clip, you can see here, it automatically keyframes to that brightness. Now there's a couple other options here. You can have it ramp up to that value and then down again to zero. or you could go from a value of one up to 3.26. For this particular example, let's go from zero to 3.26. Okay, I'm happy with the way this looks. Let's give it a play and see how it goes. Now later on, I'll need to go over here to my hotspot and set hot start and end keyframes and animate my lens flare to this light up here. But as you can see, I'm not going to need to animate the brightness because that is done automatically from the builder. So now we've just combined two effects and used them on a single clip. And what's great about this is if you ever want to reuse this effect that we've created, you can just grab it from the effect editor and drop it into a bin. You can also go up to save preset, load up the save dialog, and then call it something that you like. Apply characteristics to it that match. And then you can either save it directly to the preset browser that we just had open, or you can export a preset file for another user. And those preset files will work whenever they're loaded into the other platform programs like Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and DaVinci Resolve. While we're on the subject of presets, it's important to note that the preset browser allows you to browse the over 1500 presets by category. This includes not just stylistic presets, but utility ones as well. You can also look for specifically builder effects ones that utilize the builder to create cool backgrounds and stylistic effects like this. With minimal effort, anybody can master the builder. And at the end of the day, it will save you a lot of time and open up a world of creative possibilities.